Hello everyone. In this lesson and in this series of lessons we are going to introduce you to computer programming through C. C is a computer programming language. These lessons are meant for someone with very little or no prior experience in programming. We are going to keep our assumptions really low. We will start with the basics and carry everyone along. Okay, so let's get started. Unlike most other machines that can perform a finite set of predefined tasks, a computer is a general purpose machine that can perform any computational task. All you need to do is you need to give it a program which is nothing but a set of instructions to perform a task. A computer is nothing in itself without programs. All the tasks are performed through programs. A modern day computer would have hundreds and thousands of programs in it. There are programs that manage the hardware resources of the computer. We call such programs system programs. And then there are programs that perform your favorite tasks. We call them application programs like a web browser that you use to browse the internet or a text editor that you use to create a document. And if any of these programs cannot perform the task that you want to perform, you can write your own program. And that's what we are going to learn in this series of lessons, writing and executing your own program. As we saw, a program is a set or sequence of instructions that you would give to the computer and the computer would execute those instructions. Now in what language can I give these instructions to the computer? Can I give these instructions in a natural language like English? You must have heard that a computer understands binary. Binary is the language of computers. Binary is a number system that has only two digits, zero and one. The number system that we use is has 10 digits from 0 to 9 and we call it decimal number system. So why does computer understand binary or rather why are computers designed to understand binary? And the reason is binary is really easy to simulate in actual physical design of things in real hardware. Computer is an electrical device and it's really easy to create the logic of 0 and 1 in an electrical circuit. For example, if current is flowing through some wire, we can say that it's a 1. And if current is not flowing, we can say that it's a 0. If there is some potential difference across a capacitor, we can say that it's a 1. And if there is no potential difference, we can say that it's a 0. In general, 1 can correspond to something that exists and 0 can correspond to something that does not exist. 1 can correspond to some condition being true and 0 can correspond to that condition being false. At lowest level in a computer, any communication has to happen in binary or any data has to be stored in binary. You can use a bunch of wires together to communicate or signal something or you can use a bunch of capacitors together to store some data. In actual physical design, there may be other ways to communicate or store some information, but logically it has to be binary, a bunch of ones and zeros put together. If we use only one wire or one capacitor, we can signal or store only two possible values, zero and one. But let's say if we use two wires or capacitors together, we can signal or store four possible combinations or four possible values in binary 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. A binary digit is also called a bit. If you have only one bit, you can have two possible values and if you have two bits, you can have four possible values. Each bit can either be 0 or 1. 1 is also called set bit and 0 is also called unset bit. If we have three bits, uh, let's say each cell that I have drawn here in this figure is a bit position, then at each position we have two choices. We can either have a 0 or a 1 and corresponding to these choices we'll have two choices for the next position and corresponding to a combination of these two positions we will have two choices for the next position. So if we have three bits we can have eight possible binary values 
these are the eight possible values with three bits in decimal this is zero this is one this is two and so on in general if we have n bits we can have two to the power n possible permutations and combinations of zeros and ones we can have values from zero till two to the power n minus one uh, for n equal three we can have values from zero to seven for n equal four we can have values from zero till fifteen and we can go on for more on binary number system and things like how to convert a number from binary to decimal and vice versa you can check the description of this video for some lessons now coming back to how computer would understand and execute instructions core part of the computer that executes all the instructions is called the central processing unit or CPU sometimes we simply call it the processor and it's not the big case or box of your desktop computer it's often misunderstood like that a modern day CPU is a very small integrated circuit that would look something like this Intel is one of the companies that makes CPUs so CPU is the guy who has to execute your instructions now each instruction to the CPU has to be a pattern of bits a pattern of ones and zeros but an instruction cannot be any random pattern of bits it has to be in a certain format so that the CPU is able to decode and execute it a set of specifications are laid out for a CPU and your instructions must follow the specifications for example specification can be that any instruction to perform an arithmetical or logical operation must be in 20 bits let's say the cells in the figure that I have drawn here are bit positions in a binary number now specification can be and this is just an example that out of these 20 bits first four bits or leftmost four bits must be a binary code for the operation that you want to perform we typically write shortcut op code for operation code and operation codes will also be specified let's say operation code for add in four bits is 0001 let's say operation code for subtraction is 0010 and there can be other operations like comparison let's say comparison is 0101 so if we want to have an instruction to add two numbers these four bits must be 0001 and let's say rest of the specification is that the next eight bits must be the first operand the numbers upon which you perform operations are called operands the next eight bits can be the second operand let's say you want instruction to add numbers four and five then four in binary is one zero zero rest of these bits will be zero and five in binary is one zero one rest of these bits will be zeros leading zeros will not mean anything so what you have here in 20 bits is an instruction to add numbers 4 and 5 according to an example specification that I have picked so here is the deal this is the language that the machine actually understands and executes instructions in binary as per some laid out specifications the bits in instruction map to some physical design in circuit and we do not need to go into those details such an instruction in binary is often called machine language instruction machine language because it can be interpreted and executed by the machine or more specifically the CPU two CPUs can have entirely different architectures and entirely different specifications for instructions so machine language instruction for one CPU architecture may not work for another CPU architecture there was a time when programs were literally written in machine language it was a very tedious and error prone process think about it you would constantly have to look at the specifications for binary codes for various operations and commands the program will not be human readable you will not be able to figure out the logic by just looking at a program some improvement came with development of assembly language in assembly language we can have a more human readable representation of a machine language instruction for example if this is the machine language instruction with one opcode and two operands then in assembly language the same instruction can be written in a more readable form we can write some keywords for opcode 
say for example if this is op code for addition we can write add and then we can write the operands as well as constants in decimal operand 1 is 4 and operand 2 is 5 one can write an instruction like this in assembly language the improvement that you are getting is instead of writing operation codes and commands in binary you are writing some keywords which will make some sense instead of writing 0001 for addition we are writing add keyword and instead of writing constants in binary number as binary numbers we are writing constants in decimal but wait a minute didn't I say that CPU that has to execute all the instructions will understand only machine language instructions this guy is shouting it out loud here that I can execute only machine level machine language instructions so how can we write program in assembly language or whatever we are talking here well you can write your logic in assembly language and then you can pass the assembly language instructions to a program named assembler and this assembler will generate machine language instructions corresponding to the assembly language instructions so basically someone wrote a program named assembler and with assembler programmers could write a little more readable instructions in assembly language but there was a problem with assembly language assembly language is strongly mapped to machine language it's just that some binary codes in machine language become keywords in assembly language so just like machine language assembly language instructions will also vary from one CPU architecture to another so if you would try to port your assembly language code from one architecture to another the same program may not run you may have to rewrite your program according to a new set of specifications so both assembly and machine language are specific to architecture of machine such languages the instructions in which depend upon the architecture of machine or more specifically the architecture of CPU have been called low-level languages there was need for programming languages that would not be specific to architecture of machine such programming languages were called high-level languages a high-level language is supposed to have more elements of natural language and it's supposed to make the life of a programmer a lot more easier because he will not have to care about all the detailed low-level specifications of the machine and now let's talk about high-level languages high-level languages give you abstraction from machine architecture so many high-level languages have been developed till date I would name some of them we have C finally I took the name of C after so long we have C++ we have Java we have Python and a couple of old ones like Fortran basic and the list goes on Fortran was the first high-level language developed by IBM now even with high-level languages we cannot skip the basic rule that finally the instructions that will be executed have to be in machine language there are two possible execution models for high-level languages some languages are called compiled languages for these languages we would have a program that we would call compiler compiler will be different for different languages it will also be different for different machine architectures compiler will take your program written in a high-level language we typically say that it takes your source code written in a high-level language and generates machine code set of instructions that can be executed directly by the CPU C is example of a compiled language how it typically works is that to the compiler you would give a file or a group of files containing your program in high-level language let's say app.c is the file that will contain your program in C the compiler will generate another file that will be executable on the machine uh, let's say it will create something like app.exe exe files are executable files on Windows machine the process of generating executable files from source code written in high-level languages is called compilation basically compiler performs compilation there is another execution model for high-level languages some languages are called interpreted languages for interpreted languages we need to use programs that we call interpreters unlike compilers interpreters do not generate executable codes that can be executed separately an interpreter takes source code in a high-level language analyzes it and runs it within itself 
no executable file is created program is executed within the interpreter we will not go into the details of how it really happens python is an interpreted language theoretically any language can be compiled or interpreted but practically languages fall into one of these categories either they are compiled or interpreted so there are so many high level languages and we are saying that we will learn programming through c first of all why there are so many languages and which language is good actually there is no good or bad language some languages were written to overcome the limitations in previous languages some languages were written to make a certain set of tasks easier but as such basic constructs and primitives are same in most languages and uh, what you can do in one language can be done in another language there would be very few exceptions if someone knows one of the programming languages really well it will be very easy for him to pick on another programming language and now let's talk about c c was developed around year 1970 by a great computer scientist named dennis ritchie dennis ritchie is also the creator of unix operating system in fact unix operating system was written in c C is a high level language and it needs compilation. C is still a very famous programming language and most of the other famous programming languages like C++, Java or C# -sharp derive their basic structure, derive their basic constructs from C. So if you know the syntax of C, it's really easy to onboard these other languages at least for the basics. And C gives you a lot of low level control on machine. some people say that c is somewhere in between a low level language and high level language so working with c will give you a lot of insight into computer architecture and i think it's good for a computer science engineer so we should be clear in this series of lessons we are going to learn programming through c to learn any language we should learn some vocabulary some grammar basically we should have some set of rules some syntax some semantics of course the rules for a programming language will be much more stricter than rules for a natural language a programming language cannot be ambiguous like natural language we will get started with all of these things in our next lesson we will also write our first c program in next lesson this is it for this lesson thanks for watching